everyone, and welcome to the stream scene. We are back with an amazing episode. We're going to be talking about productivity and organization tips for streamers. So hope you guys have a notebook candy because we are going to drop some knowledge or more so our guests. Um, but first, before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to our lovely sponsor for today, Elgato. Big shout out to them for sponsoring today's episode of the stream scene. Uh, the Elgato Wave 3 is a USB microphone that's more like a microphone and mixer all in one. With Elgato's Wavelink software, you can easily route your audio from hardware or software applications and control the volume for you and your audience independently. The Elgato Wave 3 is now available at Elgato.com. You can also type exclamation points Elgato in chat for more information. And you can enter to win a, an Elgato uh, Wave 3 microphone right in chat by typing exclamation point Wave and then hanging out until the end of the show today uh, to see if you've won. So make sure to hang around and good luck in the giveaway. Um, so let's introduce our awesome guests here. But first, I have to say hi to my co-host, <laughs> the Hunter Wild. What's up, Hunter? <laughs> I love this assessment by Omniwaffle of, of Cinder looking like rose gold. <laughs> <laughs> but what does that mean? We'll leave it. We'll leave it to Omni Waffle to define. Am I pink? <laughs> there's a. There's a. Yeah. There's a hint. There's a hint of it. Interesting. Uh, so okay. I. I have been wildly productive this last week. So I am totally ready to. Uh, to share my own process and tips and tricks. Uh, organization and, and productivity is a mainstay of my considerations and and approach for virtually everything from personal life to professional life. And today, we are blessed to be in the presence of Cinder and Pons of War. Hello, you two, sharing their, their many, many and varied tips and tricks with the, the deep wisdom. So, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves one at a time, y'all choose who goes first, why you're here, who you are, and where we find you generally. Sure. Um, I'll go first. So my name is Pods of War. I started streaming about four years ago and then switched into an industry role. I was an account manager and then senior account manager at Online Performers Group, uh, which was a management company that helped a lot of streamers across Twitch, Mixer, and Facebook. Um, and then I also did, uh, or I still work as a host for GameStop TV. Uh, so when you go into a GameStop store, you look up at the TV, I'm there talking about like new releases. And uh, you can still find me on Pods of War. I still stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I currently uh, am not working at OPG anymore, but there's something in the works that is going to be really exciting. Can't talk too much on that yet. Redacted. Redacted. Okay. <laughs> Cinder, what I'll see you, you after the stream. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can't actually remember all the questions that you wanted us to answer because I was reading the chat. I'm so out of <laughs> who, so who you are, of... why you're here, and where we would generally find you. Ah, okay. So who I am? Uh, my name is Christy Anderson or Cinder Slays on Twitter. Um, and I am here because I tweet about organization all the time all and the time. for people to purge all of the things they're hoarding all the time. Um, and then I also work as the production director at Leviathan Corp, which is influencer management company, as well as a couple of other things. Um, but basically, we're the ones who are the middleman between brands AAA to indie to the influencers. I'm trying to give you money. Uh, so organizing that is why mm -hmm. I'm here. You can find me on pretty much just Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitch, Cinder, but I don't stream anymore. Sorry. Maybe one Retired. day. So you should you should follow her there too. Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> so be Dream um, Palace. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk with you guys about uh, all the different tools, tips, techniques for organizing because you know as streaming is still relatively a new industry and everyone's kind of trying to figure themselves out um you know it's a very much you wear a bunch of different hats type situation mm -hmm. right and one of those hats is management unless you have a management company which is you know by far a small proportion of the number of streamers that exist uh you you got to have these management skills these management tools 
Um, so I know, you know, Hunter kind of wanted to start out by talking a little bit about, you know, setting goals and figuring out um, how you kind of define your stream or your content. Um, so if Hunter, you want to open up with, with some goal setting questions. Yeah. So a thought that was incredibly, I, I, I like to start from simplicity and basics. Um, I, it, the, the nature of productivity itself, productivity as opposed to, to organization seems to be the act of working toward your goals. Which, therefore, in order to be productive, one must have goals toward which one will act and and further through through actions and and choices. So, when it comes to goal setting, do y'all have a particular approach or things that are consistent when it comes to you for your personal goals, for your professional goals, and goals that you're bringing to other people? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Um, I'm I'm going to be honest and just say that like I don't really have these like long term goals because I feel like I'm such a perfectionist that that mm. kind of intimidates me. Um, and I honestly feel like I'm a little bit reaching. Like if I were to say, you know, my goal is to have ten thousand followers by like on a certain social media platform by the end of the year or something that's like so out of my hands i would rather make a goal for something small that i can do to get there so i could say you know i'm going to post on instagram once a week and like commit to that but you know i i'm looking at like what uh you the agenda and like the stuff that we're going to talk about it's so great but i like one of these things is like you know do you have a five-year goal do you have a 10-year goal and i i think that i've been asked about this a lot in like job interviews oh yeah and i always kind of have to make something up because <laughs> like i <The> uh, lies <laughs> <laughs> i mean in a job interview like what are you supposed to say like you know you can't say i want to work super hard and i'm going to kill it and i want to be ceo of this company because then you're like going after their job <laughs> that's fine i and want you to replace you that's what i want that's my goal <laughs> that's what every mentor that's should mean. want right i i mean i i think that you know you you learn the skills and eventually they'll become better than you one day but um I don't know. Like I, I don't really see, I don't plan ahead that far because myself personally, like I know that I'll get stressed out by it. And I also know that everything's going to change. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm pretty good at like these short term goals, mm -hmm. but nothing that's like super wild out there. So yeah. you have some like ambiguous things that are further out there that you're driving toward, but you haven't clearly defined them. And that doesn't matter much for you and your process. As long as you can clearly define the stuff that gets you toward those further yeah, out. Yeah, like I want to work hard and I want to help people. And I guess I've never like personally defined that, but that's what drives me every day. And mm -hmm. if I have something to do, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and you also make a good point about uh, not focusing on the, like I want to hit X amount of Twitter followers, but the path that it takes to get you there. Because I think that's one of the... Uh, that uh, I think that's one of the pitfalls that streamers get into where they're like, I want to hit 10,000 followers on Twitch. I want to get 50 viewers and they're focusing on the metrics and not really the method. Uh, and yes. I know Hunter talks a lot about smart goals and how like setting the right goals can help you better feel more prepared and get you towards where you want to be, like actually make those strides and not just hyper focus on, you know, a number like follower account, which doesn't really mean too much at the end of the day rather than you know the community that you've built or uh, the engagement that you're getting right yeah and i think if you follow the method then you will get there yeah uh, so that, that's what i like to do because then you can stress yourself out and just be like oh i'm seven months in and i don't have that it is a good way to measure like maybe what i'm doing is not effective mm -hmm. you know the thing that stands out to me about those goals that you talked about uh, in terms of metrics is that it's something that I talk about with metrics a lot. 
metrics are by definition measurements. So metrics are useless if you don't have some purpose for them, right? Like knowing how large my foot is, is particularly pertinent when I'm shopping for shoes, but not necessarily when I'm making a grocery list. So the, the idea of setting our goals as streamers up around metrics necessitates having a purpose for those goals. Like why does having, what does having 10,000 followers fulfill? What does that do? What is the actual goal? Because that is a metric for judging how close you get to some goal. I think that's very val The moment that that clicked for me, I was like, oh, that's why the metrics are so dangerous. It's a constantly shifting and moving kind of goalpost that's totally arbitrary. When you hit 10K, then you want 20 and 50 and whatever. But what purpose does it serve? You know, Chrissy, do you have any commentary? Um, I do. I um, am a big goals person, but it's more like I don't really use the word goals because I'm very kind to myself if I do not mm. reach the goals mm. um, because emergent problems are a thing. So a big part of like my daily to weekly to monthly to yearly kind of planning is like every Monday, I'm like, what do I need to do this week? Um, I try and plan, you know, I work five days a week. I'm sorry, I'm not a streamer anymore who works seven days a week. So yeah, then yeah. how you need to, <laughs> but um, five days a week. So I'll plan for three days of actual work, two days of emergent problems. This way you're, you're not getting mm. behind. If something does pop up, um, if anything, you're just pulling from a backlog or getting ahead on what you need to do. Um, that's the best way to not fall into traps of like, I really wanted to get this done this week, but like, I don't know, my dog broke her leg or something like that. Oh my gosh, I'm knocking on my ginger. <laughs> but like, you just have to really plan for those things. Um, and then I'll have like a lot of the times, I can't show it to you because there are things on it that you can't see. But I have a dry erase board um, that I will return to once a week, usually on that Monday as well. And I'll have like, a, this is what I want to get done this week. This is what I want to get done this month. And here's like an upcoming calendar of the next month in the bottom corner. Um, and then I reassess that every week to see what nice. I need to change. Um, because some things do happen. Your goals do change. What you want to be in life, what you want to do is going to change. And that's okay. That's why you just have to be really kind to yourself when you don't hit the goals that you want to. Um, and this is going to sound really silly, but something that works for me with smaller goals when like, say I'm trying to sign on to social media platform less, or I'm trying to go out for 15 minute walks or something like that more often. Um, oh my gosh, everyone's going to make fun of me. I print a calendar out and I have stickers and I will stick stickers on each day that I did accomplish that. Yes. Because and that that calendar is very visible where I sit every single day because that's like a reminder of I really need to step my game up or like holy shit I'm doing really good with this and then you like don't want to break the streak because yeah. you got you have an actual visual thing in front of your that's face really smart yeah there's been a quite a bit of research on that particular thing creating the streak makes you it, it propels you toward fulfilling it even further mm -hmm. and the longer you go the far less likely you are, both in terms of habit building and in terms of that propulsion that you feel compelled to keep that streak going, it locks it in so well. Now, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic approach. Mm -hmm. that I, I love the, the sticker idea too. Like I do have like daily planner stickers. And it's interesting because as a child, I was the one that saved all my stickers. I never stuck them to anything. And I saw, <laughs> I saw this. Yeah. In the same way. Really? I don't want to right. commit my stickers. That's to anything. right. Yeah. Yeah. Issues. Oh my God. So I, I actually saw this TikTok of like people that saved their stickers, like turned into anxious adults. But <laughs> besides that, there's something thrilling now about like I did a really good thing and now I can put the sticker on the calendar like that's okay mm. you also have a lot of extra stickers so it's not like there's only one <laughs> but you're rewarding yourself by like I did that thing today and then you get to reflect on the rest of your week and, yeah. and see the streak and mm -hmm. it's really satisfying it's also yeah. a physical motion making your brain remember it because it's much easier to forget, oh, I went on this app and I clicked did this and then I put my phone back down and yeah. 
this one, you like have to get your sticker, actually physically place it on the calendar. It's that physical motion of it is what will help put it in your brain more. Yeah. And the visualization too, like being able to see that, like, you know, on your calendar, like on your wall, like, you know, that, that sense of accomplishment, where it's like, when you have an app that's on your phone or, you know, it's just kind of like, it's out in a way, like you don't really get that same feeling of like being able to see your progress, which I think is very important. Definitely. Hard so, agree. so you guys use, um, so we've talked about like, you know, like whiteboards and stuff and you guys talked a little bit about like planners, like do you guys write out physically, like write out like, you know, goals and to do lists and stuff like that. Like how much does that play into your organization, the, the physicality of, of writing stuff? I also have a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard with like a physical calendar right next to it. Um, and so I usually use my whiteboard more in like a daily sense of things that I want to complete that day. And I track like the time that I started and the time that I ended. Um, one thing that Cinder said is I don't think that I am kind to myself when I don't meet goals. I think I feel like very guilty, which is why I'm so hesitant to like make those. Um, but I've been trying to write down the times of like when I started and when I completed things, not to have a goal to complete it in a certain time, but for me to get a better uh, like a temp check on how these things are actually, how long they're actually taking me. Um, and then I'll figure out the averages. So that way I know, because in my head, I think that I should be able to complete all of this in an hour and I'll feel bad when I can't. And then after I have all this data then I'm like, you know what, like, no, my measurement is just wrong. Mm -hmm. And I can't keep feeling bad for doing the impossible because these tasks actually take longer than I thought they did. Mm hmm. Um, as far as other things that I use, um, I did just get an iPad. It was like a long time PC only person, but I sucked it up. I got an iPad and that's what I use for like brainstorming and writing. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the aspect of writing. It helps me remember, but I don't like having like journals and, and things that just like clutter. So, you know, I like the digital writing aspect. Um, and then for my day-to-day -day measurement, I just, I use ClickUp, which I know. Oh, so we're, there's oh, we're gonna wanna talk ClickUp. about no it. Worry. We're, 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 we're holding you guys back as long as we can before this becomes a ClickUp <laughs> only show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I actually recently did was I bought a separate desk, like it was just a simple, cheap desk and put in a different room and I have two notebooks. I have one for stream of square stuff and one for my own stream. And I've started to go there for my brainstorming, my goal setting and stuff, because I find that writing that stuff down, like I, I can stare, I have, I can't tell you how many apps I have to, for, for organization. I use Discord, Trello, ClickUp, like all the time uh, for organizing stuff. But there's something about like, having that free notebook to just write things out that just makes a lot of this organization become a lot clearer. And, you know, obviously, <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously like people are going to, um, you know, learn and, and, and visualize things in different ways. Like some people will find that, you know, they like using like apps like Trello or something, or like they like a, they want like a planner or something like that. So I think one thing to get out of this is we're going to offer a lot of different avenues and you should try them all out because yeah. you'll, you'll find one that really clicks with you clicks up with clicks you. up with you oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. got him <laughs> yeah for me it's a physical notebook for sure like that's my starting point so i use a bullet journal and over the years have adapted my approach uh and and methods over time, and I consider it to be, I definitely have a, a growth mindset when it comes to the, to the bullet journal and my organization and productivity. Bringing things in, providing an assessment for myself, start, stop, finish stuff for what's working, mm -hmm. why it's working, whether or not I want to add other, making it modular, add other things to it, remove certain things from it. Um, and I start every day, first with my morning pages, which is just a free flow stream of consciousness, get just brain dump. And then move right into my bullet journal stuff, which I start with seven questions to start my day and then migrating uncompleted 
incomplete tasks from yesterday into today, and then looking at my weekly and monthly goals and seeing what can get fit into today's stuff. What's going to what's gonna get me to completion of my, of my monthly goals that I can do this week and then today, and then that all gets, gets mapped out and I dive in. Mm. Physical, yeah, no. physical notebook. Yeah, so, um, no, I mean, I think that's a really good idea. And um, I know, like, someone is asking in chat, what would be a good first step if you're not a planner and have never done any creator-related planning? And mm. I think, like, you know, this you're kind of asking at the right time. It's the goal setting. Like, it's the goal setting, and then it's getting into figuring out your vision. Like, what are you trying to get out? And Hunter's going to explode if I don't let him explain what vision is. <laughs> Hunter, this is all you. Yeah, I, was, I, wrote, I wrote something up for vision and mission today, which I pretty much do this like three times a week. I, I have a beginner's mind with a lot of this stuff and I'll always like reference back to it and go like, no, I know I've been doing mission, mission, vision, vision and mission crafting for like three years, but really what is vision and mission? I just restart it again. So in my thinking, vision asks you to look out to the horizon to the furthest point away from you that you can see. Where do you want to go? on that horizon? What's that furthest out destination? Who are you now? And what will you become along the way? If I'm along the ride, on the ride with you, where are we collectively heading? And when it comes to the professional stuff, that's an important question because in our industry, especially, um, we're asking people to join us on the journey. And I think that's true of every business, but with the community orientation that we have as streamers, that's particularly pertinent. So crafting some kind of a vision that includes and, and or is a message to people that you want to join, you want to, 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 to join you. Then with the mission, the mission is effectively the vessel that will get you to that destination to fulfill the vision. So what is its shape? What does it contain? What is involved in the process of moving from where you are today to that final destination point? Vision and mission go hand in hand, play off of each other, and I think are, are critical to helping us see what we want to do, what we want to become, and then how to, how to get there without losing sight of sort of a core identity that we don't want to abandon, that we want to make sure is included with everything there. And I think it, th these are critical for, for success. Yeah, I mean, having having goals and having a focus when you're streaming is super important. Like, you know, it's not just to, oh, I want to make partner, but like, you know, there's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot more theory crafting and planning organization that goes into streaming now more than ever because it's yeah. not just, you You can't just be like some dude that plays games. Like, <laughs> there's already plenty of dudes that play games and like, you have to, uh, you know, you have to kind of work smarter, not harder. So. Uh, these these first steps I think are so important and it's never too late to start like you could be yeah. a partner streamer right now and watch this and be like oh I've been streaming for two years already like what I, I don't even have any of this so I literally rewrote my vision mission this last week I do this all the time constantly <laughs> because yeah. of what Christy related to what you said that adaptability for your goals and stuff like you know like the what was it I can't remember, was it Patton I don't know Marcus Aurelius somebody who said something about the the plan matching up with the meeting up with the enemy and it always the plan always changes as soon as everybody's on the battlefield and you have to be able to to create that adaptability for that like you're saying loco mm -hmm. things will switch there's a fun fact that in project management most of the more rigid project management theories and like schools of thought are dying out for agile which is basically just highly adaptable to all sorts of situations I like that yeah i feel like because also like streaming has changed so much like the game has changed so much and you know it, with social media too like i mean we were talking about it during the pre-show like you know, even even someone like Christy is still learning, like, you know, Twitter and trying to figure it out because things are always changing. What works, you know, a year ago may not work today, right? Yes. And the algorithms change. I don't I can't even speak for Twitches if it has <laughs> algorithms or not. But you should just be like constantly ready to change your entire plan and not this is like also a word to my own self to not just completely break down if you do have to. Yes. Pivot. 
Uh, so it's something that I had a problem with when I was a streamer. So for those of you who don't know, I was partner streamer for like six years, seven years at Twitch Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I used to get really upset if something wouldn't go my way or it didn't go the way I thought it was supposed to go. And I would completely shut down. That was like the end of my day for me. Um, so like, you know, figure out how you can work past that. Uh, and, you know, maybe talk to a therapist. I did. <laughs> but it helps you, like, get in that adaptability mindset and just roll with the punches because there are a lot of punches when it comes to streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And streaming can be super fickle, too, like, with viewership and picking games and stuff like that. And and with goal setting, too, it's just, like, don't be afraid to reevaluate your goals. Like, your short-term goals should, should be flexible, Um, you know? Like, you should kind of reevaluate where you are and where you want to be. Um, so, you know, let's get into the um, the, the productivity apps, uh -huh. because I know that uh, everyone has been dying to talk about ClickUp. Um, but so so what are we, we mentioned ClickUp? You know, this is obviously one of them. What are these apps like? What do they look like in general? So for it depends on which ones you go with. Um, Obviously, there are a ton of them. I could name a few, and that there's still a few hundred more that re could replace all of those. It's about how you want to visualize your work. That's going to be which program you're going to want to go with. Uh, I like ClickUp because it offers several different ways to visualize your work. Um, so usually, most people can find what works for them. However, I keep telling people ClickUp is like a jailbroken Android as opposed to something like Asana, which is the iPhone. You are like Asana is very easy to look at and learn click up my god the first four weeks i was out yeah. of i think or i sat in webinars every single day i played with i played with the product for the entire 30-day trial trying to work things out and see what could i could and could not do so the team was ready to jump in with me um and i still had to do a, a training call with the team and then we had another training call with a representative from ClickUp. so like it's one of those things where the more you use it the better you'll get with it. Just looking mm. at it right away, though, will 100% overwhelm a lot of people. ClickUp is the path of exile of productivity apps. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is a really good one. Yes. You need an entire manual to figure out how you want your giant branching talent tree. <laughs> right. Um, so there's also, you, you mentioned Asana, um, Monday, and I, I feel like these three in particular are like yeah. very similar in their style. They're very modular. Like, and like Christy mentioned, like the more you, you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So like long-term organization, it's going to be massive. But I mean, you know, these might not be for, for every single streamer. Like you might not need something as in depth. Yeah. Um, you know, that's going to depend on your projects and how big your team is. Um, if you want to go a little simpler, my mod team and I, we use Trello which is um, with Streamer Square, the first step that we use for productivity was it's, it's basically like a sticky note system, um, but like, you know, a, a, as an app. Have you guys had a chance to mess around with Trello a little bit? Yeah, I think everybody, like once you start learning about project management and want to get in the your foot in the door, like Trello is one of the first places people go. Yeah. Um, because it's so user-friendly, you could just hop right in, start it. And uh, there are ways that you can dive deep into it, but it's very friendly for the beginner user. Um, I I personally loved Trello, but I didn't think that everybody on my team really enjoyed that card format, which is mm. another reason why ClickUp shines so well is because the data is all there, but you get to choose how to view it. So, you know, if I liked the cards, but Audrey likes the list view, then what are we going to do? Like I'm trying to force Audrey to use Trello when that's not conducive to her style. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, that's like, we're just going to end up back at ClickUp. But if you're not yeah. working with a team, uh, then you can just, and you like Trello, then use Trello. Yeah. For your personal, well, for your private life, but also for your personal brand stuff. If you're, you're the one wearing all the hats, Trello is really easy to sure. nail all that out. I have three Trellos. <laughs> you, so like when I was doing content creation for Raw Fury as a social media strategist, having several boards, like look what I said, she has three Trellos. 
I think it's really important that once you find whatever works for you, even that's just sticky notes literally stuck to your wall, there are still some PMPs out there who do that. Um, you just like put all your ideas in that one spot. So like, I'll tell y'all right now, one of my hidden secrets was if I saw a good article that I thought related to what I was working on, I had an articles board. If I saw something that was inspirational, really loved what they did for that social media post, I had a social media inspiration board. Um, like just having everything yeah. that you need, like your goals are there, your to-do list is there. Like if you're feeling uninspired, your inspirations are there. And if you have this up all the time, then it makes it really easy to just add stuff over to it. And most of these, if not all of them have phone apps. And so it's yep. like, if you're on your phone and you see something screenshot it, will it make a task? Like For a lot of that. Uh, oh, Go ahead. I was going to say, I end up using Evernote. Mm. As no, my, another one. Yeah. So any, so far, you know, I've got different books that are note, the notebooks that are collections of, of types of stuff, groupings that are nested underneath. And so when you were talking about the inspiration and, and whatnot, I have a, like a weekly artist date that I take myself on. And a lot of it is heavily visual. I'll just take photos of stuff and, including things from various art books that I have and, and print them out and then put them on into a, into a notebook. But a lot of that inspiration gets grouped in together that I derive from that. And I'll just post it all in like a single running document of like, for this style of art, here's all my inspirational stuff. And then that's in my art notebook that also has a bunch of other stuff like processes and projects and new things I want to experiment with and whatever. And there's all these different categories and tagging systems that I use. It's that's what I end up using for the most part as kind of a, a less visual, far less visually interesting and appealing Trello. Mm -hmm. And uh, is Evernote free to use? I think Evernote has a free base thing and then it's got like okay. a professional, you know, 10 yeah. bucks a month, whatever. Trello does as well. Like you can mm -hmm. use uh, on a personal level, you can probably use Trello completely for free. I know I still yeah. do. Definitely. Um, and speaking of Trello, we actually had a handy little workshop on Trello. So if you want more information on Trello, uh, if Ahmad could link up that little workshop, that'd be super handy. Um, so I think uh, all I, of these are free. Sorry, Luca, I yeah. I couldn't Except remember if ClickUp was free. ClickUp does have free. Um, about free one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I know I, I've seen a lot of people mention Airtable. Have you guys Airtable. used that one? Yes, I've used Airtable. It's very similar to Trello um, okay. in the sense that you're like modular block listing that you can drag and drop stuff to. I haven't used Airtable in like two years, but um, it's very similar style. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also tried Airtable and it's like neat. It like satisfies my itch to like learn a new program and see if it's going to work, but it didn't stick for me. Something that I had on my personal Asana before I made the move to ClickUp was um, for my relationship. <laughs> this is gonna sound funny, but like for my personal ClickUp and the, our little relationship thing, I also had like uh, the games on my Steam list kind of blocked in certain categories. Like these are multiplayer games that, you know, me and Tyler could play together or like if I was still streaming, I would have been like, here's like a backlog list of games that I definitely want to get to. Here's different categories. If I'm going to plan like a theme week or something like that. Uh, that's what, another way that you can use these programs to help you. So if you're in a game, well, you're not just sitting there staring at 500 games on Steam. It's a much more condensed list and easier to consume. A really good idea. I've actually never thought of that. And I've seen, um, you know, I've seen streamers make like, oh, here's the list of games that we plan on playing on the channel, like this great list that I'm going to beat all these games. It's usually like a Google Docs or something, but like having it on like a Trello board or like ClickUp or something could be cool because one of the things that you can do is actually make certain boards like view only. You can make public boards where mm -hmm. uh, your community can get a sense of like, you know, what you're doing and like, like what you want to show. Like, oh, here's the, the list of games that we're going to play. Here's the list of like community events we have you know, coming up in the next couple months, so. A lot of game companies actually use Trello and Airtable and things like that um, for their roadmaps. Like the Epic Game Store has a public roadmap, I think, on Trello um, that anyone can look at, so. I think Twitch does too. 
if I recall correctly, Twitch had. You remember this? They had a Trello or something. They, they had, a Trello. had a Trello. Like that was specifically for their community development roadmap stuff and, mm-hmm. and community engagement. And this was like two years ago. I specifically remember finding this for the first time while I was driving through Taco Bell. <laughs> I remember, I remember yeah. all the conditions for when I saw this and I showed it to Logan. And I was like, what? Look at this. This is interesting. I think it was like I think it was like two years ago, and I don't think I've seen any updates to it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't work if you don't update it. Yeah, yeah it turns out, turns out. Um, you know, and and I think you know, if you're kind of sitting here wondering, like, well, I don't even know what where I would start. Like, the best way to start is finding examples of, you know, public Trellos or ClickUps, like mm-hmm. finding samples and getting that inspiration. Um, you know, even finding that Twitch one, like, even if they don't, you know, if, even if it's not updated or. Looks like people are mentioning an epic one. If if anyone can find that and get that link in chat, that there's would be an epic helpful. game stores one um, that they put on there. It came out when they didn't have a shopping cart feature. Do they have one yet? I'm not sure. I should probably know that, but uh, that's when I think I first started noticing it. But it's so people can actually see where the company is going because, as you all know, there was a lot of backlash that they were experiencing when they first came out. Mm-hmm. Just for like personal things as well, because I was kind of thinking about this. Um, as a streamer, you are a person. Uh, Turns out. But like what? things I also had in my personal Asana were like <sighs> washing instructions for random things. I had all of my instructions, like assembly instructions for furniture, I would find online and I would put it inside the Asana just in case I lost them. Uh, the washing instructions was if Tyler doesn't shrink my clothes. Um, <laughs> But like, like wow. uh, I have all of Tyler's shoe size, like shoe size, shirt size, you know, anything, you know, if you have somebody in your life that you like to put gifts for, then have all that information. You can make a Rolodex. You could make a nice example of companies you have worked with in the past who is working there currently, what their email is, what their position is. Like you can make these programs work for you. I mean, like, a big part of all this organization stuff is you need to take your stream to the next level and treat it like a job, which means becoming organized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Preach it. Yeah, and the the main reason for me why I want to be organized is because if I have to go search for something that takes me an hour or two, I get very frustrated, and then I'm just going to say, forget it. I'm not doing that thing anymore. Yep. Absolutely. And... I mean, think about the productivity you could have had in the meantime. If it was quick and easy access to the information you wanted because you would set up the conditions for good organization in the first place, and then that becomes like an automatic, oh, I know I always have to drop keywords. I know I have to create a new table for this thing, whatever. You get into the rote kind of movements for that stuff, and then everything follows. This is one of the things I think good organization for this stuff is... One of the dominoes that you set up for future success that you initial you initiate that the organization and productivity stuff and tick that that domino over and a whole bunch of other stuff that's bigger and harder to push over down the road becomes so much easier because you've made that that choice that move. It's uh it's one of the hardest. or or highest hurdles that you have to jump over because it's going to take you the longest amount of time to set up. You are inevitably going to change the way you have things organized because what you thought would work doesn't actually work in practice. So you have to like be very kind with yourself about that as well and iterate on it as you keep going Mm -hmm. on. Um, A big thing with the keywords and stuff that I wanted to talk about during this is making email inbox rules whether you use Gmail or Outlook, they Mm. all have rules that you can be like, this keyword goes into this folder. Or like, if you have ever worked with a company, put them in a folder. If you have ever declined an opportunity with a company, put them in a folder. So you have like this running list of communications. Also, if you don't want an activation, decline it because we do the same. We put people who don't respond into certain folders. <laughs> oh, I want to be in that or one. Or <laughs> it's it just happens. Like it's not like a this is your permanent record or anything like that. But it's <laughs> it's so after my permanent record forever. Yeah, it's so after the activation. Well, 
this is my project management style. But after the activation is over, we can look through all those people and assess, like, has this person previously done this to us? Have they not? Like, are they easy to work with? Are they not easy to work with? So it's like you need to start building basically this archive of things that you have done and how did you haven't done. And it sucks to have to, like, look at yourself in that kind of light and say what worked and what didn't. And like, maybe it just straight up didn't work at all. And like, be kind to yourself that I have to look at this and I have to look at this failure so I can make it better. Now, you mentioned an iterative process. Could you talk about that for just a second? What is iteration? What is iterative design? So basically it's just high adaptability in whatever process or workflow you're designing at the time. Um, so you're going to obviously start with some sort of skeleton or backbone template that you're just like, this is what I think will work. And then as you start using it, you're like, you know what, I don't really have a use for this or like this didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. And so you need to be constantly adapting the to work with how you are because everyone is different, period. What I do is not going to work for something that, you know, Loco or Hunter or Pods does like we're all going to have a different style and way that we like to process information. So once you like, if you use a template and you're like, oh, I really like the way that looks, but then you're like not sticking to it um, because a lot of this is also self-control and having mm. discipline, by the way. Uh, but if you're like, I'm just not vibing this style, then take that template and make it into a style that works for you and then change it however you need to as the days go on. It's never, I, I don't think I've ever made a plan and been like, this is it, it, start to finish, never touched it again. I'm still like, I'm at, I've been at Leviathan for four months and I'm still redoing our workflows constantly. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do the, what, what, do you have any uh, tips for the, the process of refinement for, for trying to analyze and assess what's working, what's not? You definitely want to start looking at things like, Where's the funnel or the choke point in, in this workflow? What is, what is the one thing that could block the rest of things from happening? And you need to identify those blockers and dependencies. So like mm. say, uh, I wanna do a charity stream. Well, a dependency is going to be like, say reaching out to companies to get items to give away or something like that. So if you have the items, then you can have the charity stream if it makes sense in that way. Um, and once you have those dependencies and blockers set up, then it's easier for you to understand what steps you need to go through because those dependencies are gonna naturally set what list you go through. And then after you've like identified the choke point, how can I make this faster? How can I make this work better for me? What can I start grouping together? Kind of like the diner dash games or something. Where, you know, <laughs> you're like grouping certain activities together at once to get them out the door faster. Yeah. So. It's you have to start thinking of things like that. But I would say mm -hmm. step one is always looking at the big choke points and blockers. Yeah. And, and you know, going with the charity example, if you're talking about reevaluation, like, you know, after your charity event, after everything's done, um, you know, going back and looking at, OK, so what took a lot of time? What was choppy on the stream? What looking at like what people put money towards, like what specific incentives what were people excited about having these types of evaluations will make your next charity stream so much better, so much smoother. Like you don't want it to become a headache, right? Like you don't mm -hmm. want to have to dread doing something that you want to do and make it more work than it needs to be. So, um, you know, post like looking at events after they've happened is a good way to make these permanent notes so that you can remember how it went. Because I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot going on. And like, if I do something and I don't write down how the experience was afterwards yep. if i don't do like a post-mortem like i'm going to forget and i'm just going to fall into the same trap over yep. and over again post-mortem and a debrief so that was something that you had us do at streamer square after gcx last year was like what how was this successful for us what did we do that was great what where did we fail what did we learn what would what would we change for the next time um and one of the things that we've we're working on implementing. There are two things that we're working on implementing uh, for our process and some stuff that I use for my own, which is start, stop, continue, and now, next, later. Mm -hmm. And so start, stop, continue is kind of um, an assessment tool for what's working that you continue to do, the stuff that you're already doing, what needs to start 
what needs to be initiated, what things you need to bring and put onto your onto your plate, and what things aren't working well at all and need to be, you know, cut off. And so that's your start, stop, continue. And then I like to pair that with now, next, later, which is a road mapping and kind of projection tool uh, for what's on our plate now, what's going to be up on our plate next. And so as now stuff gets checked off and removed from the list, you import things from next. And then later is stuff for down the road that gets put onto the next segment. And then from next into now, as you eventually progress through this, and you create, you open up a lot of possibilities for how that works well, I think when they're paired together. Do y'all have experience with anything like those? Definitely. Sorry, Pat, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was gonna say the biggest part about these postmortems and now next and all of that is it needs to be within the first two weeks that you've completed this event. Um, that is, it's like all this data is on this and it is fact in the PMP exams that it's like two weeks is the mark where you will start forgetting things. And something I also personally do during my projects is I have an active like bullet list or notepad or something like that, where if something pops up during that project that I know I need to address at the postmortem, I'll write it down then instead of thinking, I'll totally remember this. It was terrible <laughs> because I probably won't given the current state of 2020. Uh, and that's okay. Like it's okay. Just know that you're human and you need to prepare for the moment that you're going to forget because you are likely very easily going to forget. Yeah, I think I think two weeks is a little generous for me. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna forget way sooner than that. But I I think there's also strength in like going to these events knowing that you're going to have a debrief later, uh, because I remember being in one of like my first situation. I was like, what the heck is a post mortem? Like, I was not right. prepared for it. Um, but if I knew, then I would have gone to that event with those things in mind, looking for Your what's working and what's it. not. Mm -hmm. that's smart yeah it's a, it's all about like mindset and you know being able to again put on the hat that is your manager hat and being able to look at your stream in a way that is constructive and you're not just like you know turning on the stream every day and it's happening you know what i mean like actually taking a step back and doing that busy work behind the scenes to make everything else run smoother mm -hmm. um and and with the now next later and the stop start stop continue you know, this is just reevaluation and goal setting just in a way that's very bite sized, like very easy yeah. to visualize for me. Like, you know, the idea of setting goals is like, oh, God, uh, like, you know, I just like I I, I kind of glaze over that. But like having the the now next later approach actually makes it really easy because you can reorient your priorities and, uh, you know, just picture things in, in more of a bite sized chunk. Yeah. Yeah, and I if think your day gets away from, oh, I'm sorry, go on. I was just going to note on like the, there's a little bit of uncomfortability in like reviewing your past streams or what mm. went wrong or not. And that's very unsettling. Like I, I'm on camera all the time. I don't like watching my videos. Like <laughs> it's very uncomfortable, but you have to in order to grow. Yeah. And as, as much as I have that fear and I don't like doing it, actually, once I'm in that space, I, because I'm a little bit mean to myself, once I see that, I'm like, oh, I'm way better than I thought I was. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked about this in a panel I recorded on Friday is I streamed for, I don't know how many years, not caring what my microphone sounded like because it was good enough. And then I played like Far Cry or something and I had a really funny clip and my microphone was peaking so bad. I was like, I want to die. Oh, but, <laughs> like you really do need to review your stream and actually listen to it and, you know, see yeah. what works, what doesn't. When was the chat most active? What were you doing? Like, what game were you playing? Where in the stream was it? Do you have like a sweet spot where the most viewers are coming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and w one way to inc incorporate this is through uh, getting your mods involved and getting their feedback on things too, um, you know, because having some varying perspectives can be super helpful. Um, so for me and my team, like we do mod meetings weekly and then we actually have a mod dedicated Trello. So this allows us to see uh, what projects we're working on. Um, it allows us to plan events together 
It allows us to, um, if there's any, we, we basically keep like notes. So if there's any like issues that pop up, um, you know, we have uh, even content now that we started to put on there because I cover a lot of like news stories. So now we have like a central board for basically exchanging information and storing information, which when you have, you know, a mod team, it's really good to keep them in the loop. And, uh, and, and it, yeah, it just comes down to communication with that. And, and again, be more organized with different teams of people that you might have. Okay, I've got a question. I went to the bathroom three times before we started, but can I have that opportunity right now? No. <laughs> We're so close to the end, and I've been trying. Go to the bathroom. Yes! <laughs> that happened. Um, so Loco asked him like four times, by the way, before we all I did. Live. Yeah, I You're did. Really good. He did, though. He did. <laughs> We, we can't shave I him. used to think I had the world's smallest bladder, but now I know. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter takes the trophy here. <laughs> um, so, you know, we talked about a couple of different apps. Are there anything, any big ones that we've missed that streamers should check out? Like, is there anything that we're missing? Um, what about Discord? Do you guys use Discord for any type of organization? With no. clients, kind of. But the mm. thing with Discord um, is that you can't thread on it, so it can get easily very out of control. I also constantly question why they don't have a built-in calendar because mm. uh, it just makes sense, like even for people who don't stream who are raiders or something like that. Uh, but usually I use like Slack for our client communications yeah. or now I don't expect any streamers to do this. We use Microsoft Teams for our <laughs> like employer conversations. I've, I've heard that a lot, like not from streamers, but from like other like, you know, Biz, like industry people or like people that don't are in an industry it's like i think most of us use discord and then slack is number two and then teams is like oh my job uses teams that's because teams you know microsoft small indie company they don't have a lot of budget so it's a pretty <laughs> of course not it's not an enjoyable product in the slightest um, mm. small indie team by the way so but a lot of you'll see that a lot of like um, our side of the industry is going to be using Slack because threading and having file sharing and all of that and being able to like have a easily searchable and pinnable database, which I know you can do in Discord now, is really important to us. And at the time, you could also do video calls on Slack or you could in Discord. Um, but to me, like the still the biggest thing about why the industry isn't doing this huge switch to us using Discord is the threading. Um, because it just makes just, life so much easier. Being yeah. able to like reply to certain messages, I guess. And have it immediately condensed. Mm -hmm. So you're like, if if I want to know about this subject, which might not pertain to me at all, like I'm in a ton of the client chats, um, but you know, I'm not the one sending out new world swag. Like that's not me. So I don't really care about it. And I don't want to see 80 pings about it. Mm. Oh. Would that be kind of the same as like channels in Discord? The yeah, thing, but they come up at will, right? You can just, yeah. it's just in the moment. Yeah. We have this at Raw Fury a lot because we had different channels for everything. And then it's like, at what point do you, if a conversation naturally goes to a different subject, are you like, oh yeah, yeah. I should switch. I should switch channels. Swap it's very it awkward and not organic. Um, yeah. So you can have tons of channels, but also then you're kind of going into analysis paralysis land of- That's true. What does this topic go? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like with like, I mean, we have like a streamer square staff uh, discord server, but I think like where discord, I don't know, I, I've started using discord as like, I have my own private server that I started to use for like, pasting things and just like random notes here and there because discord, you know, they have a very handy search feature. And sometimes like, you know, I have Trello's, but sometimes you just have things that like, you don't need a whole dedicated thing for it. like you just have to throw it like type it down really quick you're going to end up deleting it later um so notepad having like a plus plus. what notepad plus plus notepad it's a program plus. it's a program it does exactly <laughs> what you just said notepad. but it allows you it saves it saves everything yes it's literally called uh type in the chat notepad plus plus, and it saves anything that you put in there and then you mm -hmm. can delete it at will. I used to, whenever I had to change my panels around, I don't know if the Twitch panels are still a nightmare, but I would copy all of the things into that. So if it oh. deleted or like got formatted weird, I could just paste it again. 
I totally mm. interrupted you, but again, yeah. I'm so sorry, Loco. No, it's word. fine. More tools <laughs> that I haven't heard of. Like, it it's just also looks nicer if you have like formatting text because Discord's going to automatically try and format it if it falls into their parameters, and Notepad plus plus doesn't care. Everyone is one. writing Notepad plus plus, so if that's on your highlight of words, yeah, I'm looking at it right old now. Old tats red now. <laughs> it's also super lightweight, so like you open it, close it, it takes an instant versus Discord, you're waiting for it to spin, Gotta especially if you're streaming, and... like, yeah. I, I also just like launched Notepad++. I feel like everything <laughs> that Christy says, I'm just like, yep, yeah. so, so, so <laughs> sign. Like, <laughs> I also use like the Windows, I, my camera's not going to stretch that far, the Windows integrated sticky notes app that comes on Windows 10 or whatever I use it is. I that all the time. My only thing is like sometimes it just be deleting random sticky notes and I'm like, come on. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I've had that happen once or twice, but um, I use that as well for like easy jot stuff down. Sorry to go back to the subject. ClickUp has one integrated into the <laughs> website. Yep. You literally just hit the N key, I think it is, and it opens up their personal notepad. So now there is one thing that I've done in with Discord specifically, which is keywords. Now this is me taking it into my own hands. So I've if for my management, which is just like the my my professional personal brand stuff. Um I have a brainstorming section that's just for here's an idea. Boop. And what I try and do is if I didn't happen to use keywords that I might use to search for it later or ways to provide context for other ideas it fits into, I just provide a space at the bottom where I just type out relevant terms, even if maybe they are repeated in the paragraph that I wrote or whatever. That way, when I go into the search bar, mm -hmm. I can actually see everything related to particular projects or subjects or subsets of the stream or any ideas that have a connection to something I'm, I'm actually looking for. Mm, yeah, I think one reason why I like Discord is because I already engage in a lot of messages and, and meetings on Discord. So like if I'm in a meeting, I'm not going to pull open, you know, Notepad or Trello. I'll just jot in my private channel, like jot the notes down and then, you know, have that like I've started to create different um, channels for different projects. So like if I have different mm. sponsored activations and I have a meeting with one of them, I'll just go into that right channel and take notes while I'm like listening to them talk. So, um, you know, it's been it's it's just because it's there and I use it so much already that it's handy to have like just like a private like just whatever channel like, you know, it's free to have discord servers. So why not, you know, make one and see if that is you know what you want to do if that's helpful for you you know make it a note about this right now oh yeah seriously <laughs> like listen to loco about the sponsored stuff like if you could just make yourself a couple of bullet points about your obligations so you don't <laughs> open your email on stream and read it word for word i would right. love that yeah no that's, a, that's actually a great point to make like uh when you have a sponsored thing like there's gonna be a lot of like there's talking points there's like notes there's you know make a checklist of what you have to turn on and turn off before and after the activation, what you need to put on your title. Like you don't want to sift through an email. Um, so like, you know, one thing that, um, you know, OPG did was like, they would just give you a checklist, but if you're your own manager, you have to get that organized yourself. And the last thing you want to do is be unprepared for a sponsored stream. Totally. Oh, and then yeah. you're not, you're not going to be able to focus on it and do your best if you're not prepared. Mm-hmm. And it also doesn't look great, you know. You're, it, it's your sponsored time. You're supposed to be playing the game, and you're setting up your chat bot. Like, and if you miss something, yeah. and you miss a point, <laughs> like you forget to turn on your bot, or you don't like title your make your title correct, or you miss something, yeah. like you don't have a panel image. Like that's that's not good. They, <laughs> they could use that to not pay you, like the prorate your amount because you didn't do what you were contracted yep. to do. <laughs> we could literally just segue into like doing talk about sponsored streams because you guys yeah. have so yeah. much experience in this industry i'm not gonna say the word again but certain tasking apps also allow you to make task templates so if like you a have a special area that you are putting your sponsored work you can have a task template like what is the company what is the game are there images here's my little checklist of things that up. they want me to do you know, i it's like it could be elsewhere. Template? I'm not sure. <laughs> I have templates for everything. Click it. Yeah. And then you when you make... did it, when you do it, you just check it off and it goes away and you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
And then you put these <laughs> notes in your mod Trello, right? So your mods can see this stuff too. So they're on the same page. So when you're streaming, they can update your title at 1 p.m. Hmm. Eastern time and they can turn the bot link on and make sure it's working. So you don't even have to stop and do that if you happen to forget, like your mod team's got your back because they are in the same loop. They're looped in. That's true. Okay. We're close to closing up shop on this one, but I would be remiss if I didn't bring up one of my favorite concepts altogether. The Eisenhower Matrix. Are y'all familiar with the Eisenhower Matrix? A little bit. I'm, I'm not on this one. I know what it looks like, but I would not be able to discuss the theory in depth. It's related to vision, Rini. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> the, Eisenhower, the Eisenhower Matrix uh, was developed by uh, Dwight Eisenhower for as a military commander. So this was used in uh, military assessment, militaristic assessment. So one axis is for priority and another axis is for urgency. So you end up with four squares, right? Vertical, horizontal axis, X and Y. So it's high priority, low priority, high urgency, low urgency. So what you end up in the boxes is one box that's just high priority, high urgency stuff. One box that's low urgency. It doesn't have to get done right away, but it's really important stuff. Like it's for our goals. That's priority, low urgency, high priority, low urgency, high urgency, low priority is this isn't a particularly important thing. The world's not going to burn if I don't do it, but if it's going to get done, it got to get done fast. It's a, that's a today thing. That's a this week or it won't get done at all. And then you have the other stuff, which is things that you can just sweep away. Low urgency, low priority, maybe secondary thoughts, other things you might add in if you have extra time. This is the linchpin for me for planning, vision, mission crafting, goal orientation, and all that stuff. And I had to throw it out there because it's been so, so critical for me. Yeah, I've actually done this a couple of times. Um, I think it's really good when you're just feeling overwhelmed by the tasks. So that way you can separate and, and feel a little bit better about it. But I didn't know that it was called this Eisenhower Matrix. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such an interesting tool. Somebody in the chat mentioned that that's called the backlogs. It's Colin, actually. <laughs> um, um, so a part about backlogs that I think is really important is going back and reassessing them every couple of weeks and just completely removing some things. Because mm -hmm. at one point, this item, you were like, yes, I really do need that. And then technology happens, algorithms change, something happens, and you're like, it's it's no longer relevant. But if you keep it on your backlog, it's just going to sit there and like cause you so much stress because you're like, my backlog's like 90 items deep. Like, don't ever let it get that long. Like I even have our yeah. backlog when I first started making it was in like need to have, nice to have like, different separations for even the backlog. So you're prioritizing things differently and reassessing that every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super important because, um, you know, I feel like I get bogged down a lot with having like, you know, a lot of projects going at once and a lot of things on the to do list. And then like and you have like real life stuff on top of all that. And there are things like um, like charity incentives that I that are from still like have to get four fulfilled. years ago. Yeah, yeah, me too. And like it's on my list, and I'm like I can't remove it from my list because I don't want to disappear if you do. I don't want to like feel like I cheated my community, but also right. like it's one of those things where it just kind of it's like it it weighs on you and you don't even realize it. And then you have all of these things weighing on you. And then you feel like you can't get anything done because you're just on a treadmill and you're yeah. building up a backlog and trying to just, you're tackling today's task and never getting to the, the backlog stuff. Right. Which is, yeah. um, there was an interesting Twitter th thread that I read about uh, like to-do list debt. And it basically goes with what Cinder was saying, which is like, reevaluate yep. these things and let some things go like you gotta let some things go because yeah. it's just gonna it's gonna it just is gonna weigh on you and it's uh you're you're not gonna get it done something you mentioned is uh spring to mind one final thought for me that with the in terms of the eisenhower matrix urgency is what we tend to do urgency is the stuff that shows up right now it's a fire that's got to get put out but the way that you have to make a lot of these assessments, in my opinion, 
is determining whether or not this fire is actually going to cause a threat. Is there is it a threat to anything? Yeah, it'll just go out on its own if you let it burn for another three days. And OK, no harm, no foul. If it's going to become a wildfire and consume your entire county, you may want to jump on that. And therefore, you've boosted it up in its in its prioritization because it's not only urgent, but it's also something that's really critical for your survival and for your productivity. Part of project management, a big part of it is going over the risk management side of things. Yeah. And part of that risk management planning is while you're thinking of what things could go wrong, it's like, on what scale would this be? Like, Severity. Is this gonna, yeah, like, is this going to cost me $20,000 or <laughs> is somebody going to die? Like, you know, those are obviously very high what up there. What are these there. projects that you're planning? Yeah, this is, <laughs> what a game. Listen, I love weird marketing. No. <laughs> <laughs> But like being able to quickly assess exactly how big of a fire this is and if it's going to cause huge problems is very important, like Hunter is saying. And if you do the risk management prior to this happening, like you should be looking at your stream as a long term project and each mm. stream segment could be like a sprint if you want to get down into project management terms. But like assessing what could go wrong during this stream, my Internet goes down. That's that's a pretty big problem because now you can't work. But like uh, my assets not loading or my notification system broke, like those are much more low part. Right. Like if your panels, you know, has your wrong age and you haven't gotten a new one and your community hounds you about it every day, but it really doesn't matter because you got more important things to work on. And then all of a sudden a year <laughs> later, you're the same age and whatever. That sounds entirely unrealistic, Loco. That, that doesn't yeah. happen to people. It, it happens, you know, just that was, it was a low priority <laughs> like thing. Like who cares if it says I'm, I'm 27 years old for uh two years you know whatever fine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like you're calling years. me out too do we have to process this <laughs> in the show check. now is this a do we have to oh no i i mean i updated it this year finally you know <laughs> i updated my age now it's this now it's out of date again <laughs> yeah. i have a few months yeah, mine says 29 it. it's not true i should just just go i should round up to 30 and that'll buy me some time <laughs> There you go. Yeah. I tell everyone I'm 30. I'm 28. I mean, you're I'm 29 this year. Mm. But if you just say you're 30, you're like, God, I'm so old. I'm just 30. Then it's just like you're there. Yeah. The yeah. acceptance is already present. One thing that I want to say before we wrap up. Um, one thing that I have been stuck in before is that I have done so much planning and so much organization that I use it as a way to procrastinate actually doing Mm -hmm. and that's really one of the most important parts like of course we need to be organized but we have to get the job done um and one way that's allowed me to do that is the pomodoro method yes yeah? oh my god huge fan. okay cool um so essentially it's a timer to where you deep focus uh for a certain amount of time i usually do 25 minutes and you know in that 25 minute block i don't check messages i don't check email like i am fully engaged in this task and then the timer goes off and for the next five minutes that's when i check like my pings from my teams see what new emails came in whether there's urgent things that have happened um but that has really helped me focus in small chunks of time because if not i'm just i am lost and yeah i can't get anything done <laughs> i can't tell you how distracted i get with twitter i will have twitter on two separate like windows and i, I close it out and then i i start looking on twitter on my phone yeah and yeah check my emails and I'm just like, I'm all over the place where I'm like, I'm doing four different tasks at once. And then I'm somehow just like on Twitter. I'm doing four I different tasks at once. And somehow I'm doing the Twitter one twice at the same <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. And then picking your phone up. Yeah. I definitely yeah. with this recommend so much for you all. If you have a problem, you know, with your phone and always getting on your phone. I don't have a problem. <laughs> you do. It's okay. You admitted it kind of ready. But um, if you, you just move the application, <laughs> you just have to move the application <laughs> to wherever it is on your phone screen, because most of the time, if you're a disciplined person, then just clicking into something like SockDoc or the calculator app when you're like, I was totally going for Twitter. It, it gives you that second of like, what the hell yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Using screen time, because if you use screen time, it will ask you if you want to use another 15 minutes. Um, another program that's coming out, but is in beta right now is called Opal. 
Um, that one actually will block all notifications from coming in on your phone for a certain amount of time. All of them. What's that, what's that so called? it's like Opal. Please spell uh, that. It's like the gem. O P A L. O P A L. Yeah. I had to like stop for a second. I was you like, use Forest? Screw this up. Um, I have used Forest before. I'm in the Opal beta now. This is why I'm using Opal over Forest. Mm. But Forest is another one of those apps. Um, and then they also make a slew of browser extensions mm. that will stop you from going to certain websites. Yeah. Um, when I'm really, really busy with work, I had one. Uh, I can't kind of can't even remember the name of it now. This is going to sound awful. But I always pulled up pictures of puppies or kitties when I pulled up Twitter. And I'd be like, heck, I'm doing it again. But you can still see your notification and your direct messages but it stops you from endlessly scrolling your feed. Mm -hmm. It's all about that self-discipline and realizing mm -hmm. that you you do have a problem. <laughs> we all have it. I mean, and, and time management true. too, right? Like, you know, you don't want to sit at your computer for 12 hours and spend most of that just like wasting time. Because then when you burn out, you're not getting actually anything done. And Time management's super important. Yeah, the time's so much more. We need another 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll need a part two. Hours. Round, round two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Mm. Um, let's do some shout outs. Uh, Cinder Pods, thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't worry, we will have a part two. So if you have any, any questions or any topics that we didn't get to, feel free to throw it in chat now. Uh, we'll write it down and make sure that we get it for the next time. So feel free to do that. Um, but yeah, so let's do some shout outs. Um, Cinder, where can we find you and uh, what are you up to? Uh, so you can only find me really on Twitter at Cinder Slays. I'm there all the time, even though I just talked about time management. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> And you'll probably mostly see me tweeting pictures of my dog. I do a lot of Twitter analytics uh, and strategy advice, organizational tips like product management, um, and then a lot of retweets for Leviathan Core. Check your emails, streamers. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Pods, what about you? Uh, you can find me on all the socials at Pods of War. Um, if you go into a GameStop store, look up at the TV. If you get a chance, I'm on it sometimes. Um, so I am writing and hosting for that with Meg Cayley, in case you know her. Yeah, um, yeah she's great. And uh, my professional work, I will still be working in the gaming industry. Can't talk too much about that just yet. But I am streaming on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. <laughs> I'm like fielding questions and taking note here. I was, I was just gonna wait until you noticed that there was the dead air. Uh, I am the Hunter Wild. You can find me on Twitter at the Hunter Wild TV on Twitch at the Hunter Wild just by itself. Uh, right here on our Monday shows, the stream scene, which you have been watching. Uh, right alongside the incredible and amazing Loco, who does all of our God tier work and on the back end. Fantastic. What about you, Loco? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash L O W C O. Um, I talk about games and play games and talk about tech and streaming. Um, so yeah, pretty much like what happens here. I do on my own channel as well. Um, and I'm here every single week doing Streamer Square. So if you guys like this stuff, you can find us on Streamer Square pretty much everywhere. And uh, Hunter, if you want to, don't mind doing our shout out to our sponsor for today. Heck yeah. This segment is brought to you by Elgato Wave as part of our Elgato partnership. The Elgato Wave 3 is a USB microphone that's more like a microphone and mixer all in one. With Elgato's Wavelink software, you can easily route your audio from hardware or software applications and control the volume independently for your audience, which is my favorite feature. Elgato Wave 3 is available now at elgato.com, and you can type exclamation mark Elgato in chat for more information. Yeah, and it looks like OmniWaffle has won uh, a Wave 3 microphone. <laughs> what? This seems wow. right. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, we will be giving away another one next week during our show. Uh, so if you guys want to win some more Elgato stuff, 
Don't go anywhere. Follow the Streamers Square Twitch channel and check out our shows this week and every week here. Uh, we don't have any your brand your business after today's show, unfortunately. It will be back next week. So other than that, uh, the next show will be tomorrow, Tuesday. We've got Behind the Streams and Dan's Stream of Thoughts. So uh, we'll see you next time on Streamer Square. And thank you for watching.